in the name of my ancestors. Peace, firm, and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Love 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always and respect you. As we set fire to the Confederate flag, as we set fire to the sheets of the Klansmen, we remain proud to be African supremacists. You cracker loving Uncle Tom, House Negroes cannot infiltrate the structure of the African supremacists. We remain pure from the filth of interracial interbreeding. We remain pure from the filth of interracial relations. And last but not least, we remain pure of the pollution of Western civilization. One love under one nation. Africa, America, it's your brother, Tech Nine, host of the African Supremacy Blog Talk Radio Show. And I just want to say, black power to all of my brothers and sisters out there. Alrighty then, you've come to the right place. This is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Just being a little casual here, just had a a thought that run through my mind while I was thinking about it just decided why not put it on video so let me put it on video and let us talk about it okay on this busy let us get busy <laughs> I am of course the mighty one angel snub nub seven okay I was thinking because of the recent uh, decision that I made to ban Caucasian people from my channel, the reaction was from them extreme anger and being upset. One of the results or response or the consequence of me making such, such an action was I would assume white people calling my telephone making death threats and of course they left nasty comments on the videos which of course is expected now this whole behavior from these Caucasian persons brings about a question and it's mind-boggling and it causes the mind to go into wonderment in that why are white people obsessed with black YouTube channels? Now there are many Caucasian channels they talk about race, they talk about politics, whatever they want to talk about I have no interest they can call black people monkeys. You can say that you want to exterminate black people. Whatever these white folks want to say, black people are trifling. Whatever these suckers want to say, I have no interest to go to their channels and make a comment or even make a video response. I'm not interested in these silly white folks. There's a website called Chimp Out. It's dedicated to the degradation, mockery 
of African people, black people, the so-called Negro, they want to express their hatred and dislike for black people. I have never visited the website. I could care less. I created a channel. This channel was created and it says in the profile that my number one priority is the upliftment of the black man and woman in America. Number one priority. Although I am a pro-humanity channel, I cannot help humanity until I help cause my people to become human. I cannot help humanity until our problems are solved. We cannot help nobody else until the house that we have that is filthy, that is dusty, until it is clean. You cannot help nobody till you're able to help yourself. So it is very clear the message and who I want to talk to are black people. It reminds me of when you're having a conversation with one particular person. I want to talk to Johnny. So Johnny comes and I'm having a conversation. Let us say Akbar. I don't know African name off the bat, you know, you know, Swahili. Let's say Swahili. Okay, I want to talk to Swahili. Let's let's try to go African. I I'm not y'all have to teach me on African names and stuff like that, but let's talk to Swahili Muhammad. Alright. I'm speaking to Swahili Muhammad. That's who I want to talk to. Now here come John Hall. And John Hall wants to enter the conversation because he is nosy and he's interested in the conversation. It's a good topic. So here comes John, Johnny Hall wants to join the conversation between myself and Swahi Muhammad. The problem is that's disrespectful. I do, I, if I want it, John Hall to be part of the conversation, I would have said, hey, Mr. Hall, John, could you come over here? I want you to join this conversation. Let us talk about this particular topic. There are many, many black channels, African-American YouTube channels. Now, I don't know how many invite white people to join the conversation. I really did not... Uh, I did not in really like invite. I'm a pro-humanity channel. But for those who are civil or cordial, you know, you can listen to the conversation. But clearly, the conversation is for black people. It's disrespectful for you to come and uninvited or even invited why you want to interfere with the conversation you know that is between these two persons. It's disrespectful. But see... For Caucasian people, I don't know, it's something about them. Y'all say it's their nature, but they are very disrespectful. So what we talking about white folks? You talk about black people all over YouTube. I could care less. I'm not interested. I want to talk to my people. Now, some Caucasian people want to join the conversation because they are nosy. What is these Negroes talking about? They didn't invite me. I want to be included because they nosy. Why are they nosy? They want to know where your mind is. Are you thinking like Sarasut and Seti? Are you thinking like Martin Luther King? So I know I can punch you in your eye and you'll turn the other cheek. They want to know where our mentality at is at. But all they have to do is read the comments, watch the videos. You don't have to join the conversation. But that's just how they are. 
Many Caucasian people, they are faceless, and being faceless gives them an opportunity to call you a, to, well not call you, but write on your page, nigga, porch monkey, chimp, and any of these other degrading names they've come up with, that's their opportunity because they know in person they would not dare call you a nigger or push monkey or none of this stuff in your face. So for the cowardly, faceless Caucasian people, this gives them opportunity to experience their fantasy because they know in real life if they walk up to a black people, especially without a weapon, and talk that nonsense, they get their ass whooped. Now, you don't have to interact. You can, many uh, of these websites allow you to bring a video response. They might allow you to, to comment. But see, I'm talking to my people. I'm not here to interact with you. I don't care nothing about your opinion. I don't care nothing about your advice. I don't care nothing about what you know. I'm talking to black people. That's who these black channels are designed for. We're not here seeking advice, suggestions from Caucasian people. Do you understand? You can observe, but we're not here to interact because I already know how you think. If you were thinking properly, and if you were thinking with justice and being fair and equal, there would be no need for these channels. But because the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves in America, in this nation and around the world, we have been denied freedom. We've been denied justice and equality. That's why we have to come among ourselves and we understand that we are in a bad condition. Even though we know that it was white people that put us in this condition, we cannot continue to believe that Caucasian people are going to help us. We must help ourselves. And I do agree with those brothers and sisters that say we must make proper choices and accept responsibility for ourselves. But I'm never going to allow and let Caucasian people who put us in this condition, I'm never going to shut up and be silent. I'm going to always remind them of the evil because they've done nothing to help change the condition except run their mouth and give out scraps and be fake. So you can take your fake ass on. That's why I'm talking to black folks. I'm not talking to you. Now, if you are a white person, Caucasian person, really interested in the conversation, then you create your own channel where you could invite me to your channel and then I can speak on your channel. And your channel is dedicated to racial conversation, discussion, or whatever. And we can have dialogue. But you come to these black channels to be fake. Just like uh, I recently busted this guy, the Melton Response, whatever his name is. He's going to come to me, act like he understands the black condition. But he goes behind our back, talking to the racist white folks. The ones we know don't give a damn about us. And he's joining the scene. So, because of his actions, then I had no choice but to ban white folks because I'm sick of the stupid comments, the arguing and debating. You're not here to help black folks. You're not bringing no solutions. You're bringing your stupid opinion. And you have no power. You have no influence. So there's no benefit to have you on my channel. So get the hell out of Dodge. Now, whenever you are being accused of something you didn't do, like when black folks said that white people do this and white, if you are not guilty, make your video, put it on your channel, and 
and defend yourself. I am not interested in nothing you have to say. I don't care about your advice. I'm repeating this because I want to make it clear. I don't care not about your advice. I don't care not about your suggestions. I don't care not about your statistics. I don't care nothing that the white folks have to say and bring. You're not bringing us no help. More talk. Now if you bring some dollar bills, if you bring some help, if you have power and influence and can help our people, help our community, that might be different. But to bring, oh, your talk, pretending like you're a friend and you're nothing but a devil in sheep's clothing. I'm not going to put that on the poor wolf. <laughs> Nosy ass people. You are afraid that black folks get together and come up out of Babylon, this wicked and filthy world you made so that we can grow beyond being an Oreo cookie because all of us so-called black folks, we Oreo cookies is all we know. We are black on the outside, but we have the white man's mind, including myself. But we got to break the shackles of that European influence, and that's what you fear. You fear separation. You fear the slave running away from the plantation. That's why you're bringing your nosy ass here so you want to see, are we progressing? And if we're not progressing, then you can wipe the sweat from your, from your brow. Woo, that was a close one. Do we hate white people? You full of fear. My time is out. Jot down your comments. We're going to talk about why these Caucasians are, are obsessed with coming on black YouTube channels. This one it is. The Rallies Temple on Earth. Okay, I just wanted to add on to the conversation we had earlier. The question arises, why? It just, it remains mind-boggling to me. Why do Caucasian persons or white people, why are you obsessed with black YouTube channels you just have to put your two cents you have to do whatever you can you get angry if you if you are not allowed to put a comment make a video response interact with with black YouTube channels that do not want to interact with you you cannot make nobody socialize with you. You cannot make nobody interact with you. You have to look at it also this way. The those of us who are born in America, the descendants of slaves including the slaves themselves. If there was a YouTube in 1555, if there was a YouTube in 1619, if there was a YouTube during that early period of time when the black man or this African was first walked upon this land, they communicated with you. They allowed you, in fact, you forced yourself on their YouTube pages. They didn't have a choice. What was the result? The result was Jim Crow. The result was raping black women. The result was this housing discrimination, employment discrimination, and so forth. The result was terrorism, and you still have that type of mentality because you still want to terrorize and harass black folks even on YouTube. We are not seeking out white folks' channels to mess with you. But for some reason, whether it is on YouTube or whether it is in real life, you could not stay in Europe to yourself. You had to come up out of Europe and begin to bother the dark people of 
the planet. Then you expect somebody, after you have raped them, after you have robbed them, lied to them, deceived them, mistreated them, terrorized them, placed upon them a holocaust that is 100 times worse than these Zionists could ever experience or think of. Then you expect us, now that we have a little freedom away from you, you still believe and we can see that you still have that same master conqueror terrorist mentality. You think for some reason we are supposed to interact with you. Anybody with common sense, if somebody is trying to hurt you, if somebody is abusing to you, exploit you, harm you, if you have any common sense, then you run away from them. You, uh, you disassociate yourself with them. You want to teach black folks something. You had 400 years to teach us and tell us what you want us to know. What is the result? The result is what you see today. In fact, you're giving advice and your suggestions. You're talking to the wrong people. It is not black folks that's the troublemaker. The black man and woman of America, we have tried to live in peace and harmony with these racist Caucasian people Ever since we've been here, it is your people that's the troublemaker. You are the problem. But you don't want to accept that. It's not us, the black man in America, it's not us that needs teaching. You need to teach and suggest and go to your own white people. They are the problem. And since they have control of the media, since they have control over the books, education, and the law and government. They have the power and the means to change the condition if they wanted to overnight to make it better for everybody involved. But they benefit. They like being superior. And that's what you don't understand. Many of these Caucasian people, they like this feeling of supremacy over others. They like it. They don't die for democracy. They die for white supremacy. That's what they really die for. And that's what they really uphold. There are many African American channels, black YouTube channels, that will be happy to embrace you and take you in because they are Americans. And they think like you do. So why don't you go and play with those black folks that love you? I don't love you like that because you have done nothing to earn my love. I don't love you like that because I don't trust you. I don't love you like that because you've proven to be insincere, untrustworthy, diabolical, deceitful, a murderer, a savage. That's what I see in you. But there are black folks, no matter what you do to them, you beat them, you call them nigger, you discriminate against them. They don't care what you do to them, and they will smile, and they will shake your hand, and they will, and they will try to marry your sons and your daughters. They will love you, no matter how evil you are. Those Negroes. Don't play with them. But you don't want to play with them because you know they your bitch. So you don't really want to bother them. You want to come to these black YouTube channels that don't like you. Why would you want to go to a place where you're not trusted? Now, again, like I said, if you want to show that you are trustworthy, then you do that by your actions, not by your talk. I could care less what some faceless person claiming to be white has to say. I'll say it again. I 
could care less about what some faceless person claiming to be white and a goody two-shoe, I don't care what you have to say. Show your face. So when your white friends see you, see, the problem is you don't want to be seen as a nigger lover. Ain't that right? That's why you hide your face. That's why you say the things you say hiding behind a picture. Show your face. Show black folks what you really about. But you hide. And you want to play go seek. Go seek. I am in living color. I'm talking to you in an open and honest, civil and cordial manner. I'm not running and hiding. And I will stand on that no matter what. I will suffer harassment. I will suffer job loss. I will suffer to be who I am. And I am being real with you. But y'all are a bunch of fakes. And you're not willing to do the same thing because you really don't like us. You fake. You want to say that this is the government. Or oh, it's not black and white issue. Well, it's the government that made it black and white. They are the ones who ordained. They are the ones that made legal black slavery. Jim Crow was legal. And also the government is controlled and it was created by white people. Nobody black. When you have a black YouTube channel like my channel and many others this is a family matter. When you are having problems in your family, you get pissed off if somebody tries to interfere with you and your wife and your children. It's the same thing. Now, we have our own personal problems we're trying to deal with. I'll see you at work. I'll see you at the zoo in the public park at Denny's or whatever. But this is a family matter. Don't try to come in my house and interfere with what's going on in my house. This is a family matter. See, you continue to be disrespectful. But again, that's just how arrogant y'all are because in, in your subconscious, you believe that black folks still are slaves. I'm not your slave. I don't care about your suggestions. I don't care about your advice. I don't care what you want to give. I want nothing from your ass. Leave us alone. Again, you are not and have not proven yourself trustworthy. You are not, have not shown that you are sincere. You hide behind a picture. I will respect those white people that show their face and talk. They may not be sincere. They may be fakes, but they show their face so we know who they are and other white people can challenge them for being Negro lovers. <laughs> I want to know. Some of you said, I want to know and understand the plight of my black, black friends. I have, I have black friends. Many of y'all Caucasian, you quick to say you have black friends. They are your friends because they are nothing but dark-skinned people, but their mentality is like you. Do they teach you about Africa? Do they teach you to speak our uh, African language? Do they suggest to you that you should take an African name? Are they learning, trying to return back to some of the customs of Africa and try to understand and learn our ancestors? No. They are with you listening to the latest Lady Gaga record that just came out. Dancing to Chris Brown and Beyonce. The kind of stuff, you know, Bill Cosby, Happy Father's Day, Bill Cosby is the number one television father because white folks like Bill Cosby they are nothing 
but black versions of you. You don't have no friends like me. Not to say uh, there are a lot of pro-black folks. If you show them that you are trustworthy, you can have African-minded type people as friends, but you don't want them because you want blacks to be like you. I don't want to be like your ass. And then you want to try to say and tell us about your problems. You a victim too. That's just like a man that been shot one time, complaining, have the nerve to complain, talking to a man that been shot twenty times at the brink of death. How can this man been shot one time? Raised, how can you compare your injury to this guy that's laying on the table barely able to breathe? But that's how y'all want to play it. You've never been a slave. You've never been castrated for 400 years. You've never been through the torture, physically or mentally. In fact, black folks, we're doing damn good considering what we've been through. And we're trying to deal with this ourselves because you don't want to help. You had 400 years. Now you fake ass, what you scared of, you think we're going to get our act together and leave you. Just like the man told his wife, because she fat, nobody want her. Well, she fat and she got somebody else better than you. And that's what y'all fear. Jump down your cousin, my time is up. And uh, just go about your business. You really not wanted here. Subscribe and just. <laughs> I'm out, y'all. Time is hot. <laughs> Peace and respect you. This is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry, of course. I am that mighty one, Angel Snub Nub Seven. And when I call myself the Might. Might, mighty, mm. angel something I said. When I say that, of course, many people would think that I'm talking about me as an individual. But I'm not talking about me as an individual. I'm talking about you and me as a people. We are mighty, mighty at this time. We're having problems so that we cannot express our power. But we are powerful, and that's why so many are doing everything they can to keep us powerless, to keep us down, to keep us in a bad position because they know how mighty, mighty, mighty we truly are. But at the same time, in all our might, don't you know that some of the mightiest people, some of the most powerful and you think uh, most famous and people that you look up upon, don't you know that some of the most strongest people that you know of, many of them have had thoughts of suicide. Many of them wanted to die. And you look at their lives. They have money. They have glory. They have fame. They have fortune. It looks like they have everything. But something is missing. And they don't want to live no more. So you have a mighty people. Some of you say that we come from these kings and queens. Some of you said that we're gods and goddesses. But we're gods and goddesses and kings and queens but we don't express living we express death or giving up on life so I want to bring to you a question that arose in my mind something for us to talk about and that question is have the black people of America have the African people of the earth the dark people, those who are related to the descendants of slaves, 
born in America? Have we given up on life? If you look at our attitude, if you look at our behaviors, are these behaviors that show that we are a living people? Or are these behaviors that show that we are dead? And before the self-righteous, before those who judge others, before you get on your high horse, I see you with your money. I see you with your education. I see you with your success. And you just as dead and suicidal as anybody else. In fact, you will commit suicide. In fact, you really don't want to live. You suffer from depression. You suffer from anxiety. You suffer with all your success. You still suffer from low self-esteem. You still enter the realm of the question, have you given up on life? During the history of the black people in America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called us deaf, dumb, and blind. He taught me that we are a dead people and that it takes the power of a God or the power of a Christ to raise the dead to life. In Christian teachings, they believe it's talking about physical death. There is no evidence that once we become physically dead, that we can be arisen from the grave. But those who are dead, what we call spiritually or mentally, those can be raised from the dead. In fact, if you raise that mentality to life, you can avoid much of this physical death that we see in black communities day in and day out. In the black community, we have so many funerals that death has become known to us. We experience so many things that make us feel like losers. It all has become known to us and it has become just a way of life. Death is a way of life. During our history, what's coming up out of the shackles of slavery? And we were given many great leaders, many prophets, many messengers, many warners from within our ranks because of their information. It seemed as though for a time, for a little time there, the black man and woman was beginning to rise from the grave and the Caucasian racist people that put you in the grave began to fear. They never saw nothing like this. They never seen something that was dead regain life. It's a miracle. We don't want these of whom we murdered to be brought back to life because as long as they are dead, they serve the living. The dead cannot do nothing on its own. The dead is moved by those who live. And since the white people, these racist Caucasians, since they are of the living compared to us, many of them are mentally dead, but they are living compared to us, so they have the power to move the dead. So however the white man want us to be and want us to do, if the white man wants us to go east, we go east. If he wants us to go west, Long time ago, he did it by force, but now he's slicker than us. He's smarter than us because a, a living person is always 
uh, smarter and can do things because you're living than a dead person. So now we move to places we think we want to move on our own, but it's the white man that's calling us to move over there or here or want this kind of job or think like that or believe in this God or that God. The living controls the dead. It's the living that takes care of the cemetery. The cemetery don't take care of itself. So the black community has become a big Cemetery of the living dead. So for a time, it seemed as though we was rising from that grave. And we began to come up out of the white man's names. We stopped eating pork. We began to choose other religions other than what our former slave masters wanted us to do. We began to do our own thing for ourselves, start thinking for ourselves. But somewhere in this evolution, this process to be arisen from the grave, it seems we've lost the will to live. And you can lose the, the will to live when somebody has mistreated you, when you're being exploited, when you are suffering great pain and hurt it makes you want to die little children that are bullied and uh, are, are made mockery of many of them commit suicide because they can't handle the mockery they can't handle being bullied some people want to die because they don't have any money some people go into a depression because I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. People, when things go wrong in their life, they want to die. So if they are in a car accident, if they are suffering some kind of sickness, why should I live? Let the heart attack kill me. Let the sickness kill me. Let the car accident kill me. Whatever it is, let it kill me. I just want to die because they lost their will to live they have no purpose. And the black community is like that. We don't really have our purpose. Our purpose that we know of is still serving the white man. And we know this. I don't care how you love America. I don't care how whatever you think in your mind, whatever you want to try to be, the bottom line is that you know that you're still a slave. You know that's your reality. Well, uh, I'm patriotic. I'm, I don't know what you're talking about, fella. I'm proud to be Christian, and I'm proud to I'm proud to, to be an American. You are proud to give up on your own life and be somebody else's slave. So you have accepted death. You've given up on your life. So now the little life that you have, it benefits somebody else. Just like the dead, once you return to the ground, then your body will help a tree live. It will help feed some maggots or whatever because that's the purpose of it. Now you will become fertilizer and you will feed something that's living. And that's how we are now. We've giving up on life. How can we regain that back? We regain that back. And this is not only seen of black people in America, but around the earth. It's seen as though the black man, the African, you've given up on your life because you've been beaten up by these racist Europeans, these uh, colonizers, these conquerors, you've been beaten up so bad for the last few thousand years and black man and woman, we've been here in America for a few hundred years and we're tired of fighting. The more we try to, it seems we can't win. But then you are a hypocrite because many of y'all believe in God and God don't want you to be a slave to no man or give up 
on life because God teaches you that life is valuable and life is a gift that he or she gives to the human being. Your gift. So if y'all are so religious in America, in Africa, or wherever y'all spiritual God-fearing black folks is at, why do your actions and your behaviors show that you have given up on life? You live for the benefit of somebody else. And that's something your God don't want. I wonder about you. Do you, do you have a reason to live? And if I ask you in person, many of you say, well, I live for my children. I live whatever. Well, whatever, if you live for your children, then get out your ass and go to work and fight for their freedom. Fight for betterment. Calling yourself an American. Calling yourself Christian. And all these other titles we have. The only thing you're doing is making sure that your children stay slaves to somebody. You should want their 1,000% total freedom. And that's why you are giving up on life because you're living for somebody else. Live for you for a change. Stop benefiting somebody else or something else. Do what's good for you. And then the gift of life that was given to you, then we can more so appreciate it. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This was, it is, <laughs> the reality's temple on earth. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snub Nub 7, and welcome once again to another edition of the reality's temple on earth. Just being a little informal, being a little casual, and uh, hopefully I can make my point within the 15 minute time frame allotted by uh, this particular channel. I want to say that Angel Snub Nub 7 is a loser. And just because you're a loser does not mean you can't be a winner. The only thing wrong with being a loser is that you accept your loss. You stop trying. In order to win, you must lose. Just like a baby trying to learn how to walk. When the baby first begins to stand, the baby falls. The baby crawls. The baby seems like he or she should be able to walk, but they continue to tumble. Sometimes it takes so long for some people to learn how to walk, it seems as though they may never. But as long as the infant, as long as that child, even though they lose, even though he or she lose as long as they don't lose the will to keep trying then eventually they will become a winner so when you call angel snuck nut seven a loser a failure that does not bother me because i have not lost the will to win and in reference to that popular uh, rap song by uh, DJ Khaled of which I love all I can do is win and that's what I intend to do living or dead when I was a basketball player in fact I'm still a basketball player and I consider myself a pretty good basketball player Many people would not choose me on their team. 
And the reason why they would not choose me on that team is because I don't dribble the way you're supposed to, the traditional way. I don't shoot a ball the way you think somebody is supposed to shoot the ball. So since I do not uh, demonstrate basketball skills in the, in the manner they believe they should be displayed, then they view me as a loser. Thus, I would not get picked. The object of playing basketball is to take this rubber ball or whatever it's made out of and you score by shooting it off your hand through this ring or this hoop. When I taught myself how to put that basketball through a hoop, I learned by playing with a tennis ball. Of course a tennis ball is not a basketball, but when I was growing up, I was not given a basketball. And I made do with what I had, which was a tennis ball and coffee cans. I would cut the bottom out of the coffee cans and place them on not a straight tree, but a tree that was all crooked. I would take the tennis ball and shoot the tennis ball like it was a basketball into the coffee can I call a rim or a hoop. And pretty soon I was very, very good at taking this little bass, I mean, this little tennis ball and shooting it through the coffee cans. I could I could even throw hook shots. So I was saying to myself, if I can shoot this tennis ball through the through this coffee can, I wonder what I could do with a real basketball and a real rim. So eventually I graduated to the uh, basketball goal, to the basketball where they play basketball. And it was a little awkward because the basketball it's 10 times or more bigger than a tennis ball. But a basketball rim is much bigger than a coffee can. So after readjusting my shot, people were amazed. Even though my shot looked funny, I was very accurate at shooting or placing that basketball through that hoop and then because of practice and practice and practice I was unorthodox I dribble I train one side of uh, my right hand to dribble the ball so tough it looked like I was dribbling or could dribble with my left and right hand and my left hand was weaker but I depended more on my right so they thought because I basically would dribble with my right hand, I was weak. They just didn't know. And so this person that is unorthodox, this person that looked odd, this person that looked like a loser, I would go on the basketball court because I was different. Ah, Y'all got to understand this because I was different. I became a winner. I would beat these guys back to back. They would get angry because no matter how hard they tried, they could not beat me. They could not win. And so, what I want to say in a nutshell is that the rejection of my ideology of my philosophy, the rejection of my wisdom does not bother me. The people that come and challenge, test, make mockery, trying to degrade, 
attack my character. All these things do not bother me because that's what you go through when you are a winner. Or when they know or can see that you are a winner. They, it's a mind game. They want you to believe that you are a loser. People are afraid of change. They are afraid of new ideas. You voted for Barack Obama and the masses of America scream change. But they really didn't want change. They wanted business as usual, but they wanted just to be made comfortable. They did not want change because change is to bring something different. Are you living different in America? Are you doing anything different in America? The only thing you wanted was to become comfortable because now you're suffering. You do not want change. Barack Obama is doing the exact same thing that all other American presidents have done prior to him. He's a murderer, a liar, a deceiver, just like those prior to him. They don't want change. Black conscience, Afrocentricity, black power, African supremacy, all these things, all these names that y'all come up with, all of them have been used in the past. All of them, all these ideologies, your spiritual energy, all these things that y'all talk about, they have yet to make you a winner. You are a loser because you don't want change. Those who were in the beginning driving cars, they were made mockery by those who were still riding horses because those who continued to ride horses, they could not accept change. They could not accept new ideas, new strategies. But now in 2011, you may get a horse for recreational purposes, but you don't want to use a horse to get around with. Black power, black revolution, black struggle needs new strategy, new ideas. And until you do that, the only thing you're going to do is continue to be the white man's bitch. And what make you a bitch is you only thing you do is sit back and complain and holler and scream, kill the cracker. And the white man, the devil do this. And the reason why you complain is because you can't change your condition because your strategy, your idea, your philosophy that has shown you can't work. You hold on to it. You should be driving a car, but you're on the back of a camel. In fact, many of y'all want to spend your hard earned money to go visit the pyramid so you can ride a damn camel. I can wait for my reward. I can wait for my success, living or dead, because sooner or later, your old idea, your old strategy, your old thought is going to run out and leave you high and dry so you have no choice but to look for new ideas new strategy. I'm not that much of a loser because this ministry has six strong channels, hundreds of subscriptions. I have one hour lectures that gain views better than the 15 minute video. So that should tell you something, that the people are tired of riding horseback. They are tired of going to the outhouse when they should have indoor plumbing. People with new ideas, people with new strategy are seen as crazy. But your money, your education, your religion, and all the things that y'all hold on to, Look at the world that you live in. What has it done? What it has done 
is make you say, I want to change. It has brought a hundred percent dissatisfaction from the masses of the people in America and around the world. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, with 50% dissatisfaction becomes, the result is 50% change. 75% dissatisfaction, you will get 75% change. Now you're living at a time where everybody, unless they benefit from the uh, activity of the wicked, 100% change. So change is a coming. Change is a coming. And you're going to have to just deal with and accept new strategy. It's not going to work. It is proven. It worked back then. It don't anymore. You need to accept thinking for yourself. You need to think outside of these boxes so that these strategies can come forth. The answer to your prayers is not just in some God. If God don't want you or cause you to use your brain, then you don't need that type of God. What do you think you have a brain for? So you can think. And that's what makes me different. That's what makes me look odd. That's what makes me look like a loser. But who's the real loser? I shed tears for you because y'all still slaves. And you're happy to be that way. But a change is a coming. I'm happy to be a loser because a loser demonstrates winning. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother, Administer Talik IBNRAD.